Today we're going to be talking about graphing square root functions. So our parent function is f of x equals the square root of x. And first let's get an idea of what this graph looks like. So I have a chart of key values. Now you want to make sure that you're plugging in perfect squares for our original parent function. So the square root of 0 is 0, the square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 4 is 2. So those are some key points to help us get a general idea of what our graph looks like. So we have 0, 0, 1, 1, and then 4, 2. You could also do um, 9 and 3, because the square root of 9 is 3. So that just gets you another point. Really, when we're graphing, we're just going to be translating these first three points. And I call this the one-winged bird. So it looks something like that. Because you can't square root a negative number and get a real number out, our domain is greater than or equal to zero. And our range, the minimum number here is zero and goes up. Because when I square root, I'm never going to get a negative. So our range is y is greater than or equal to 0. OK, identify the domain and range. OK, the domain includes values for which our radican, which is a fancy way of saying the piece underneath our radical, is non-negative, meaning x minus 2 has to be greater than or equal to 0. So x has to be greater than or equal to 2. So that's our domain. Now, to figure out the range, you plug in that minimum value for our domain into the function. So I find f of 2 and I plug in 2 for x. So we get the square root of 0, which is 0. So y has to be greater than or equal to 0. And honestly, a lot of times if you look at the graph, that's how you're going to get your range. OK, translations. Translations we've been doing. Horizontal translations. H, you should recognize this. H moves it left or right. K is going to move it up and down. A tells us our vertical stretch. OK. So if our a is bigger than 1, the absolute value of it, we're stretched vertically. If not, it's compressed vertically. Okay. So please make sure you have this in your notes. Because this is what we've been doing all along, but we haven't done translations in a while. So please make sure you have this in your notes. OK, graphing that function. First thing you need to recognize. 4, that takes me 4 to the left. And then the 2 is up 2. So that point is going to be at 1, 2, 3, 4, 2. Now normally how we would graph the square root function, how we would graph the function that's just translated 4 and up 2. It would look something like this. I go up 1 over 1, because that's what our parent function had. And then I would go over 4, up 2. So that's what our non, that's what our, just a our regular old translated function looks like. But this 3, that's a vertical stretch by 3. So you take all of your y coordinates and stretch them up 3. This point stays the same. This point, instead of going over 1, up 1, I'm going to go over 1 to the right, up 3. And then instead of going over 4, that stays the same. But instead of going up 2, I'm going to go up 6. So the function that we're graphing is this second one in green. And I just want to show you guys what that stretch did to our graph. So now domain. Honestly, I look at the graph to look at domain. 
x is greater than or equal to 4. You could just set this inside part greater than or equal to 4. And then y's are greater than or equal to 2. Okay, the next function. If a is positive, your graph looks like this. But in this case, our a is negative. So it's going to look something like that. Let's get our translations. Plus 6 is 6 to the left. Plus 4 is up 4. So I put that point down. Now a is negative, so I'm going to be going this way. Make sure you guys keep that in mind. a is negative, so I'm going that way. It's a vertical stretch of 1 half. So instead of going down one over one, I'm going to go down only a half and to the right one. I'm going to go, instead of going down two over four, I'm going to go down one and over four. Compressing your y's by one half. So your domain, x is greater than or equal to negative six, because I'm going this direction. Now I'm going down, so y's are going to be less than or equal to our positive 4. Okay, an inequality. So we have a few things that we have to do with this inequality. First of all, if you notice, it's a negative, so it's going to, general shape is going to be like that. Less than means I'm going to be dashed. And what you also have to do is you also have to factor out the 3. Okay, so now I know my vertex. My vertex is going to be right 3. I'm sorry, left 3, up 5. I had the right direction, I just didn't know my left from my right. So left 3, up 5. Now this 3 is a horizontal compression by 1 third. Remember you take the reciprocal of that number to figure out whether or not it's a stretch or a compression. You take the reciprocal, since the reciprocal of that number is between 0 and 1, it's a compression. So. I'm going to go down one, but only over a third. And for the next point, I would go down two, but only over four thirds. And again, you can approximate those. Now be careful. Few things you want to take notice of. We're dashed, okay? So it's a dashed graph. And also, inequalities get shaded. Okay. Think of our domain and our range. This is the stopping point. Okay. So the domain and range, and since I'm less than, I'm shading below my graph, I can't go to the left of where this point is because that's going to make the function true. So it's everything below, but I can't shade to the left of that x value. And we're shading everything below. Um, domain and range, technically these aren't functions, so I probably shouldn't have the domain and range sitting there. Okay? Okay, so that was graphing square root functions. There are your two lesson questions. The first one, you need to state the translation. Second one, you need to state the domain and range, and that one's multiple choice. And please make sure that is submitted on time.